G'day, Tragic here, and welcome back to the latest Mage Knight. Let me get my glasses on so I can see a little better. There we go. Now, basically, it is the end of day at the moment. Like, when I click the re rewards changed, it will change it to night. Now, I think we've got one more day after this, so we've got to start thinking about how we're going to win this game. So let's have a look at the score here. This mod has a cool little score thing that keeps track of the scores for you, so it's a lot easier to calculate. But uh, Yig is at 73 right now, according to this, and everyone else is in high 50s. So Wolfhawk and Ethereal are both near 60, and Norwez is at 51. He's right down the bottom. Now, it's going to be hard for people to catch up. Wolfhawk can probably catch him up. Wolfhawk has got a, a dungeon here, and there's a dungeon here. Whoever gets those dungeons is basically going to win. But Norez over here, how is he going to earn points? There's a dragon here he can fight. He won't be able to fight this dragon because, uh, you know, the witch is probably going to kill, kill that one. So he's basically got to try and figure out a way to earn points, earn fame. Now he can come down here and take some of these locations. One, two, three places there he can take that'll give him some fame. This one has got a city icon. If he comes over here, there's a dragon icon he can grab. But there's not really a lot for him to do. We've really picked the board clean. There's another maze down here he can get. And this maze is right next to a dungeon tile. And remember, in, in dungeon mode, you can kind of swim through the tiles, like underneath, go through. All the dungeons are connected by tunnels. I'll show you that working in a sec. So all the points are really up in this little section here, basically for Wolfhawk and Yig to get. So it's going to be really, really hard for anyone else to catch up. I'm thinking Norwez is actually going to fly over to here and then try and get this dungeon. The problem is there's a five point to walk through there. That's a, that's the forest is going to be five points at night. So there's a lot of movement. It's going to be very hard for him to get anywhere. The other option is he comes down here and then he goes into this thing here. That'll get him one dragon. But one dragon for the whole night <clears throat> is not going to be a lot. So, yeah, he's uh, really having a hard time. I really don't know what I'm going to do with him. I've kind of screwed him up, screwed up his deck. Like, I do really like throwaway cards and I use them a lot, as you've seen. But because I was running so many nights instead of just one... It was hard for me to keep track of what I was doing. And I think I've actually gutted his deck a little too much. Still, let's get into this. It is, let's just uh, flip over the day night. Oh, wait, there was one little correction. She, she used her Horn of Wrath, which I was supposed to roll two die and get a wound for each black or red rolled. Let's just do that now. So it's a black or red. Oh, almost got, so no no wounds. So that's fine. Okay. Let's hit the rewards button and Yabamo. It is now nighttime. Everyone's flipping around and it's time to go. Starting with Nora. So Nora's needs, what has Nora's got? He's got bunch of move he's got a throwaway all he's got is move basically and misform so he has a massive move there is a black in the thing and he has got a blue so he can misform as well so he's got a great movement here so he can basically move anywhere oh look so we have a rampaging enemies have turned up right next to him so that's basically he can only move this way he can move up to here, grab a tomb, but it's not really going to help him. That is going to produce a dragon. You know what he could do? If he could get to here, anywhere around here. Oh, there's all these lakes in the way, isn't there? Move cost of all terrains, including lakes. Okay, so basically he wants preparation. Oh, no, he doesn't. Oh, damn it. I've already clicked it. Because he wants to go... He wants to go before these guys. Oh, no, these guys are both on their own things. to Yeah, so they're going to delay a turn because they're going to fight in here anyway. Okay, so Athena, 
she basically wants i'm going to take sparing power because i love that card uh, i think yig is going to take minor search and wolfhawk is going to take meditation okay so you can see how these buttons over here uh if i click a thea's thing it should just that's yeah that does the storing power for us and then the button goes away so we forget we haven't forgotten Okay, so we're just going to do that every turn for her. And Wolfhawk's buttons here. Yeah, so, yeah, the mod's doing its thing. Let's make sure these are all on the screen. Sometimes they roll and they... What's this? No tint. No, let's... I want the tint. Let's go. It is Yig's turn. He has Mana Search. What have he got? He's got a good blocker. He's got Concentration. He's got Improvisation. So he can produce... Tons of block, and he can produce five, six, seven, eight, nine attack. Oh, and he's got this thing here. So we're going to spend a red crystal, and that is going to power his attack as attack five. Well, he's. Uh, oh, let's have a look at the offer. What have we got here? He is sitting in a monastery. So we finally got the gold units out. There's a monastery there. Ice block six, that costs eight influence. Now he is zero. He has no influence in hand. Oh, this can be influence. And this is influence. Four, five, six. Yeah, so firstly, let's roll. Let's roll these two die. Now, something someone told me in the comments is said so this, this this mirrored source right actually is a mirror of whatever's up here so i thought oh, you had to roll on here but you can actually roll the dice down here oh, <laughs> it's exactly the same <laughs> but you can actually roll it here and you put it back in there and it copies it back to the source as well. So you don't have to roll up here and then move it around and all that stuff I was doing at the beginning of the game. You can simply do your re-rolls on this thing itself and it will mirror it back up as well as mirroring it from there back down. So it's a, it mirrors both ways. Okay, so that basically rolled the exact same die so that wasn't helpful. Oh, we've got all, all this thing here. So what we're going to do, we're going to go... Four influence, and we're gonna go four, five, six, seven. Oh wait, he's also on a monastery. What have we got here? We've got ice shield. This is another one of these uh, new inverted commas cards from the mod, from the uh, custom card set that uh, what's name built heavenly shield, whatever his name is. And we've got blood ritual. Oh, that's such a good card. So that's thirteen. How much did we need again? We need eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14. Okay, so to recap, I'm going to buy this guy. He costs 8. And this guy here, it also costs 6. Okay, so let's just go through this again. I've been having uh, some kind of mental conniption here and unable to count. We took a action card for 6 and we bought a unit for 8. Okay, so that is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 influence we need to produce okay we've produced four using a crystal we produce five using improvisation so that's nine and then we produced another six here which means that's 15 influence so that is done so let's end the turn uh why didn't that discard your blammo now it is wolf hawk wolf hawk is we're going to want to attack this tomb. Has he got the cards to do it? We've got Book of Wisdom, the best throwaway card in the game. We've got lots of influence. We've got no attack and no block, basically. So that is terrible hand. We do have Book of Wisdom, so we can throw away Threaten or Promise. So we can throw this away to get a spell. We can get a red or a white spell. Or we can get a red or a white action card. So what have we got here? We have lots of white. Chivalry. That is a nice card. It's attack two, attack four, plus the fame. What's going on here? My thing crashed. 
Oh no, I've actually never seen Tabletop Simulator crash before. That's not good. Let's uh, see if we can oh, accidentally load a blender. What the hell's going on? Let's have a look at the action. Okay, we're back in. So we just loaded up one of the auto saves and we're, we need to end the turn. What's oh, claimed. Okay, we're back. We're back. Let's have a look here. Throwaway card, we've got a blue, which is a block seven. That is amazing. Plus we've got learning, pay influence to gain an action card. And we've got chivalry. So you know what I'm gonna do? Do some preparation. I'm going to, oh, what's in the spell offer? We've got demolish, restoration, and call to arms. He doesn't want call to arms. So basically we're gonna throw away book of wisdom and we're gonna throw away our influence. Throw away an action card from your hand, gain an advanced action card from the advanced action offer to your hand. That is the same color as a thrown away card. So we're gonna get a white card and we're actually gonna take, uh, hmm. do I want this block? It's got move three, block three, unit, with, uh, or do I want chivalry? You know what I think I'm gonna do? This thing produces seven, this got four, and this thing produces five. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna take this, take learning, and see what comes out next. Ice bolt, okay. So this goes into our hand. And then I'm gonna go four, five, six. I didn't think that through. I thought I had a, I thought I had a red mana for some reason. It is night, isn't it? So I can't use that gold. Hmm. Uh, oh wait, I'm gonna get rid of this. Four, five, six, seven. So we produced four, five, six, seven, and pay seven influence to gain an advanced action card from the action offer to your hand. And we're gonna take perseverance. And that basically replaces this card with this better version of that card. Let's do that for his turn, you blammo. Blammo. We actually have some gas now. Still got hardly any attack. We've got Sword of Justice, actually. Okay, so we can kill the dragon next turn. Okay, now it is Norway's turn. Now, Norway's is the guy I really don't know what to do with. He also has training. He can do another throwaway. He's got lots of move. Look at that, all move, basically. What has he got? Uh, we have in, in Need. We've got Ice Bolt for blue, and we've got Chivalry for white. I think I'm going to save this for now. I'm going to use Decompose on this guy. Right, so he has one, two, three, four. So he's got seven move just from putting that card down because this is giving him a three. He needs three, six, nine move to get to this dungeon. He will not, this won't help him do, uh, this won't help him actually win dungeon master, but it will give him a, a dragon to fight, which will help him XP wise. So that's what he's going to do. So he's going to go move away so he doesn't aggro these guys. So that's three, six, nine. And he just by himself has produced, oh dear. How's he going to fight a dragon when he's just got nothing but move in his hand? Let's just see what else he can do. He can produce another. Let's just see where he can get to. There's a dungeon here, right? So he can go one, two to move away, then one, two to get here. So that's four, five, six to enter the dungeon. God, he really doesn't have a lot of options, does he? He could come down here. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That'd get him over here. He'd still need five to get through there and to get up there and then then what? Man, he has got no options. That's a really bad hand. He did take preparation though, so he can take a card out of his deck, right? Man, I have no idea what to do with this bloke. He has just got no good options. This guy can't beat him. Green and blue in his hand. What's up here? There is a green. We 
we've got a nice blue. So I think he is actually going to throw away a card. He's going to throw away a move. He's going to pay with blue. Uh, play with white, uh, green, big pardon. Uh, that should be blue. Pay with green. Throw away a blue and he's going to take mana bolt. That gives him a... <laughs> actually gives him a uh, an attack phase. So he's now got six range attack. What does this require? That is ice range attack. Oh, this guy's got ice resistance. Great. So does she. <laughs> oh, dear. Then I'm going to go four... Clear some of the. I've, I've got to clear these things out of my hand so I can draw some things to attack. That gives us four, five, six, seven. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'll do the other move that gives us nine. So that's and for preparation, a search. We want a good attack or a good block. So we've got a nice block here really don't have a lot of options. I'm going to take Soul Harvester into my hand. Okay, so preparation has been used. And that's that. Let's end the turn. Bammo. Oh, I used... I used two dice. I used two dice. One of these... Uh, I can change it here, can I? One of these has to be blue. Yep, that changes up there. Awesome. And then I'll throw away this thing. Uh, how do I get rid of that? Chuck it up here? Yeah. Okay. Bam. Right. So that's a much better hand for attacking dragons. Next is the witch. So. Oh, we've got to fight this guy. So what have we got in our hand? Let me just have a look at this dude. Now he is not going to be so the the wall is 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 not next to us, so that he's not fortified. So what have we got here? Oh, so we got don't have a lot of what's this thing do? Discard a card from your discard a card of any color. Use the stronger effect of a spell of the same color from the spells without paying the mana cost. You may use the dark ones even during the day. That's awesome, isn't it? Heal four. Recruit a unit. So this recruit a unit thing, call to arms, it will not work on Defalni Masters. Yeah, so Defalni Masters, they cannot be recruited by the Call to Glory spell. But it doesn't say anything about these dudes, which are basically almost as good yeah so i'm pretty sure these guys can be recruited so that's what we're going to do so let's do if we do discard a card of any color so let's discard use the stronger effect of a spell of the same color from the spell offer without paying its mana cost and we're going to do call to arms recruit one unit from the unit offer for free and we're going to recruit the guardian bam Nice. So this gives us block eight, attack five, and we can gain resistances or resistances. So now I need to produce. I don't have any influence though, do I? Okay, so let me think. So this thing actually is thrown out to use that lower power. What I need to do is somehow buy rebirth now. And I can use this guy twice each round. So, we can't attack that dragon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this with the blue and gain a blue crystal. I'm going to leave all this stuff in my hand. And that's going to basically be my turn. I've got to put this back so the mod doesn't think I've killed him. And hopefully next turn I'll be able to buy restoration. Your blammo. Bit of preparation this turn. So now it is Yig's turn, so we're going to just store another card for Thea. 
Yig's turn. What have you got for us, baby? Nice. So, got a lot of gas now. We've got movement. We've got a great block. We don't have a lot of attack, though. We do have take a wound, gain crystals. Take a wound, gain three minor tokens of any color. Well, this is this is like an amazing card. Why is it taking me so long to, for someone to buy this card? And he does have mana search, which is excellent. So he can produce a total of four, five, six, seven, eight. He can produce eight attack, eight, nine, ten attack, not using units. Well, basically, we don't care about units, do we? Because we, we want to get into here. I think I'm just going to attack this monastery. Okay, so we need to block three or we take four wounds. That's not very nice. God, I'm not using this thing. Maybe I should just block with this guy. That will wound him, but it will absorb the damage. So how does that work again? God, it's been so long since I played this game. So he has four armor, plus he has resistance to physical resistance. So he can absorb this basically, or absorb one of them. If the unit is resistant to the elements of the attack, first, reduce the amount of damage by the unit's armor without wounding the unit. If this absorbs all the damage, nothing happens. This guy can absorb one of those hits because he has four physical resistance, which means it absorbs one of the fireballs, just bounces off him. Okay, so we only have to block three. So I'm just going to go like that. That's the other block. I then am going to roll the two golds. Don't get anything of interest. You know what would be cool, Mr. Mod Maker? Have a little button on the mirrored source or something up here so you can just click the die you want to re-roll and just have it roll it for you. Go on, you're the coding master. Code more. Do more coding, tough. There's not enough coding in this mod. <laughs> uh, right, so we need a red crystal, which we don't have a red crystal. Uh, we have a green, though. Four, five, six... Oh, wait. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So to recap, we have attacked the monastery. It has a... It must be an evil monastery. It's got like a demons flying around. So they fly in the air around the thing. They fire their fireballs at us. One of them gets absorbed by our ice golems just like because he's got an ice armor or whatever. And the other one... We block with a block two and a one. So that's three block. We then cast concentration, which gives plus two. So we're four, five, six, and we have a permanent two. So that's six, seven, eight, which is enough to kill him. And that is the end of that guy. So end turn and level up your bammo. Now we get another artifact. Hmm. Well, we're just going to take the gold mana claim. And let's end the turn. Oh, new skill tokens, new advanced tokens. Tokens, tokens, tokens. Righteous path, all oh, baby. <laughs> we don't really want any more move, but it does have attack four on it as well. This is a really good one too, attack six. Righteous path is good because it's a bit of, it's sort of attack and move. Reduce the move cost of one space by your reputation bonus. What is reputation bonus? Minus one. <laughs> so that actually adds. <laughs> adds to the... Uh, what you get to take? I hate these skills. Look, don't get me wrong. The, 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 the dwarf is a great custom mage knight. I play him a lot, but you can tell that I'm just not as into his abilities as the originals 
because I have basically taken none of his skills. And I'm going to take this one here, which means I have to take the last card, which is Chivalry. Okay, that's the end of that. Oh, uh, that's it. Rewards claimed. Click this thing. Okay, nice. Now it is Wolfhook's turn. He has gas in his hand. So he is going to attack in here. See if we can do this. Oh, it is a nasty, nasty card. I'm back. <laughs> uh, this is a complicated fight. So I, I did a couple of different iterations. I'm going to try and edit it together so you can kind of see my thought processes. But basically, we have the ability to block this and attack at seven and kill him. And that uses every card in our hand, right? And that's going to put, there's already four in our deed deck. And then we could use preparation to possibly get back Sword of Justice or uh, per Perseverance. Both those cards would be nice to keep. Or we can take the two damage because he's only going to do two damage even with that attack, right? And then we have to kill him for 14. Now we can do that as well. So which one's the best? I think it might be best just to try and have the keep cards in our hand. So we're going to do this. So that's four five, six, seven. That's seven attack just by itself with one card sideways. So bam, seven attack. Now all we need to do is produce another seven. So we can go bam, that gives us four. We have two wounds in hand. And then we go four, sort of justice, bam, and Sword of Justice gives us plus three. So that's four, five, six, seven. So that kills him. And then at the end of our combat, so after the combat, we tap both of these. We get a blue and a white crystal in hand. And we heal both of these wounds. And that's that. So let's end this, your bamo. We gain a sight reward, so we need a Yeah, we get a another Oh Banner Command, no good for him, so he's gonna take the black mana. And bam, rewards claimed. Nice. Now it is Norwen's turn. So Norwen, what was his plan? Did he not move? What did he do last turn? Yeah, he moved up to here. He's supposed to be here. Bam, let's fight this baby. What have we got here? We can't use our units. And we do have the Howl on us, but it doesn't matter because it only affects units, which we're not going to be using anyway. So, he is a much worse dragon. It's only 8 to kill, but the attack is much worse. If we don't block this with 12 block, we gain 4 wounds, which is quite a lot. We do have Stat Resolve in our hand. Okay, so, what have we got here? Now, he is attacking with. Someone told me that I got this backwards last time. There's a old school, like really old school D and D concept of opposing elements, which you don't see a much anymore. So, like, it it feels natural to say fire block will be will help you block against fire, but it's actually the opposite. So the way this table's written is a little bit confusing. So basically, if we attack with fire, if they attack with fire and we block with fire, it's minus. The only one that's one-to-one -one is ice block, okay? And this is extra confusing for me because I've been playing Mage Knight, uh, Trek Knight a little bit. And Trek Knight, they actually reversed it. So you use matching colors just to make it easier because it's sort of like a slightly, I'm not gonna say dumbed down, but more streamlined. Like they've simplified the rules a little in certain areas. And one of the ways they've done that is that you can partially block. And one of the ways they've done that is by having matching colors do proper blocking just to make it easier visually. 
but it's actually the reverse here. So I actually did a block wrong in the last turn. So we need to block with, uh, we have an ice block in hand is my point. So we can ice block five with that. That reduces this to one attack, which we need two block to cover. And this is two block. So that successfully blocks this guy. And now we need to produce eight attack. And we've got attack three, attack six, seven, eight. So that will kill him. And we block successfully. Okay, so he is dead. So just to recap, he is attacking with eight fire. We are blocking with ice block five, which is a one-to-one -one block. So that leaves one block left over. So we've blocked five of it, we still have to block one. We're blocking with stout resolve, which gives us two block, because remember, it's fire, so we have to block twice for it. So that is two block. That means he's blocked. We don't get affected by brutal, which is awesome. And now we've got to attack back for eight. We are going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually, I'm actually just going to throw away. I'm going to throw away a soul harvester for eight attack and keep, keep the, keep mist form in hand. So bam. That gets thrown away, and that does eight attack, which is all we need to kill this guy. And that's that. Let's end the turn. Bammo. And we have taken out a dungeon. So let's roll. Gets a spell. I'm going to take... Is there anything else worth getting up here? The Delphi we can't do. The hero... We can claim the hero. He only needs one more fame to level up and get another slot too. I think he's going to get a uh, call to arms. Bam. Oh, mana claim. <laughs> that is an awesome spell. Okay. So, next turn is Athena's turn. Now, Athena, she wanted to buy... Restoration, right? So we've got influence, influence. So that's four, five, six. So we're going to discard this card using this spell here. And that gives us a white crystal. So that's four, eight fame. That gives us plus two fame. Oh, that even levels us up. Nice. And we're going to get Restoration. Okay, end of that turn. Bammo, and that does level us up. So we get a new skill token. We want the plus two move, I think. Which means we can take any one of these. Oh, Spell Force! I'm going to take Spell Force. Bam. And that's that. Store a card. Your blammo. And now it is Yig's turn. Who was the first player? Yig. So that is our two turns. So that was basically a lot of prep work. The turns are getting more complicated though. So he wants to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Next turn. He has no movement in his hand basically at all. Oh wait, he's got 4, 5, 6, 7. So he's got 7 movement. 7. So 7 would actually get him to here, wouldn't it? That's 5 to get into. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's no way these guys are going to get to there before him, I don't think. So he could probably go there. 
Oh, maybe there's hope for him yet. He is getting new skills next turn. Okay, so that is the end of that. I think... <laughs> I don't know why, but I had a really hard time playing that uh, that round. That's what I get for doing a, doing a video first thing in the morning. Now, you might be wondering why it slowed a little bit down on the, doing the videos. It's because uh, I've started playing around with uh, some other stuff. Check this out. Uh, I'll just save this. Yeah, so basically I'm going to be playing Death Angel on my other channel. So I was just playing around with this little mod that I've been doing for Death Angel. It's early stages yet. The only thing that's really scripted at the moment is the uh, setup of the location decks. So you can do Core, you can do the Tyranids, or you can do a Locations, which is all, where the Tyranids and the Core are mixed together. I just made a custom set of blue cards for that. So apart from that, there's not a lot. I've, I've done these sort of dice rollers to do the rolling. But that's pretty much all the scripting in the mod at the moment. I don't know when I'll finish this, but uh, I thought maybe it might be a good idea to finish this mod and use the XML. So basically, Mage Knight, that Mage Knight mod that I've been playing with you guys, uh... All the scripting in this is done using what they call XML in Tabletop Simulator. Now, I haven't really ever used it. I use the traditional old old school button system because the, the, the XML was only added a few years ago. And I've wanted to use it in my Arkham mod. Now, I wanted to use it in this mod, but the problem is... This is a complicated mod that I'm building here. So there's quite a lot to learn. So what I thought might be a cool idea is if I make this Death Angel mod and I use it as a, it's a simple game with a simple amount of scripting that I can use to learn how to use the XML scripting. Because I've been very impressed with Tuff's mod, especially that hexagon, you know, counting the movement points because that opens up a lot of wargaming mods that I've always wanted to play. Anyway, whatever. The point is, I'm rambling on. I'll see you guys next time.